Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's fantastic. That wasn't attached. Everything here is great. Haven't touched this yet. Didn't get a chance last night with softball and stuff. Today we're talking about uh, the last book in the Harmony, not the last book, the fourth book in Harmony Black series called Cold Spectrum. And as I mentioned yesterday, I'm glad I read past book three because book three was pretty poor. And by the time I got done with it, I was ready to read anything else. Um, but I decided, I think this was right before going to Gamma Trade Show. I decided to download this uh, just to have something to read just in case because I was reading something else. Wait, did we, did we skip a book that I read? I think I was reading something else, got done with it, and thought, what do I read next? And I said, well, I'll read this last book. Or maybe I had just finished uh, Glass Predator and just downloaded it just because... Um, yeah, I think that's it, actually. So, whatever. I'm glad I downloaded it. I enjoyed the read. Uh, if you if you have been following along, this is a series of books about a female FBI agent who fights demons. And this is the last book that the original publisher, 47 North, which is an Amazon publishing company. Amazon is the publisher, but they have a bunch of imprints. 47 North published these four books. And they dropped the series after these four books. So these four books tell a story. Like, it starts off, in the first book there is some sort of, oh, there's something bigger going on. That something bigger is called Cold Spectrum. Uh, and by the end of this book, that something is resolved. So, I'm glad I read through book three. I'm glad I got to the end of this. These characters that I followed... Uh, I enjoyed their development, and I enjoyed seeing them in their final form, essentially, at the end of this book. Uh, I will continue with the series someday. Right now, I'm reading, I'm going to try to read just kind of various authors, lots of stuff all over the place, so I'll come back to this at some point. Uh, the reason is, I have followed up, and there are at least three other books. I think there's an eighth book that's been announced but isn't out yet. I'm not 100% sure. But I read on the author's website that there that after this book, there's like a th books five, six, and seven are form a trilogy of sorts. So uh, I'm excited about that. I'm also excited that it's a complete change in direction. Uh, the new books, the books after this four part series, uh, to a, a small time jump, and also switch to third person, which I am all in on. Like. I should have mentioned this. Maybe I haven't mentioned this all along. These are first-person narrative books. And I almost universally hate first-person. I realize it's like it's the thing in mystery and pulp. Um, I just don't... I very rarely like it. Uh, and in this series, it felt very restricting. Because Harmony Black, yeah, she's the main character. She's our protagonist. The rest of the team is super important and we never get to we only get to see what what of them what harmony decides to tell us like or what she observes or whatever we don't get any cool stuff that they're doing behind the scenes they just have to have these constant info dumps hey i did this thing and i did the thing and i don't like it I, as a for, as a person who reads a lot i would much rather have an omniscient third person who can jump between heads can jump between perspectives can show me things as the reader that are interesting to the story without having to rely on the first person character seeing it or talking about it. And so I've always found that it's just clunky unless it's really that like gritty noir, I'm the only person in this story and I'm going to tell you the story. I can deal with that, but generally I find first person to be super restrictive and I don't like it. I don't like writing in first person unless it's, unless it's like factually about myself. Like if it's, if it's, a, 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 an essay or a or a, a true story but writing fiction first person nah not gonna do it ever i don't like it so what did i think of the book i liked it a lot i think that it gave a good wrap up i felt that the pacing was good i felt that all of that stuff i complained about in book three where it just seemed like we're gonna slap some some crap on these characters and see what shakes out of all of that that kind of got removed uh, i didn't feel 
I, there weren't. There were a few parts in the book, and we'll talk about that when I get to spoilers, where I felt like I really had to go, okay, and just give them a lot of leeway. But it was very few and far between. Unlike book three, book three, I felt like I had to give the characters so much leeway because they did so many things out of character. They did so many stupid, just, what are you doing? You're an idiot kind of things. This book didn't seem to be that way. Um, I think the book satisfactorily wraps up the Cold Spectrum story, which starts again in book one. And I think that it sets up a good future for the team, for um, for Circus Self, I think they call themselves. And so I, I, you know, I felt like it was a solid conclusion to that genre, that season of the story. I think I rated it four out of five on Goodreads. I feel like that's a fair assessment. It is better than average. It's definitely, definitely better than the last book. I, the last book was the worst of the series by far, in my opinion. Uh, so from here on out, we're going to talk spoilers. So if you want to read the book later and you don't want it spoiled, go away. Go somewhere else. I felt... The, so Cold Spectrum, the wrap-up was fine. Like, I'm glad we wrapped it up. But it also felt, like, dumb. Like, really dumb. Uh, in the first book, when they mentioned Cold Spectrum and... Kevin goes and talks to his Warcraft buddy about Cold Spectrum, and suddenly all these back channel signals came alive, and every every lettered agent in the country was searching who's asking about Cold Spectrum, like, and it just turned out that it was just another vigilant lock cell that knew the secret, knew the truth. That was just really dumb. Like, it was a really uh, okay. Who gives a shit? Like, it wasn't. It wasn't a big deal, and and the other part being that. These people, so Glass Predator being, uh, ta t teaching us about Red Eye or whatever it was called, the, the secret spy thing, being blind to these remaining Cold Spectrum people um, so that they could have a chance at life or whatever, they were already silenced. So does, it, does Cold Spectrum matter at this point? No. Like, once it got, once the system, you know, once Harmony's team requested they turn off the protection for those people so that they could find them and get the answers. Once that happened, why did anybody give a shit? Like, why did anybody go after these people? They've been in hiding all these years. They're not telling their secrets. Who gives a shit? The, yes, they know that they are, um, you know, being bamboozled and they're fighting for the devils. Wh whatever. Who? It, eh, it doesn't really... Like, it, it just felt... Cold Spectrum felt like... Not a red herring, but just way overblown early on by the author. And it turned out to just be this really dumb thing. Um, I liked the new character. I forget her name already. I just finished this book the other day and I already forgot her name. She was really fun, a logistics expert, and can fly anything, that sort of stuff. Very A-team-esque kind of thing. Um, and I liked the satisfactory ending of the FBI director being taken down and now... Uh, Harmony and her team are, and well, Jesse and her team are now free to be what they're supposed to be, to be the force for good, to be the, the, the agents that protect humans from the demons. I like that. I, I felt like that was a really fun conclusion to all of that. They are now, they are in charge, Linder works for them, and they get to go do the thing. I had a lot of fun with that. Uh, I'd say the one moment that felt really awkward to me was putting all the senators and, and spy agency people in a pool and dousing them with gasoline so they could film it for, I guess, Bobby Deal's initiation into the network, but Bobby Deal wasn't there. So why would, why would, I mean, maybe he orchestrated it and that's good enough for the network, I don't know. It just felt, that, like, that whole thing felt weird. And then, of course, you know, the characters who are about to get set on fire talk their way out of it within minutes and suddenly everybody's like, what do you talk? Oh, and they just believe everything. Like, come on, whatever. I had to suspend disbelief around the whole pool scene. Like, I think that could have been handled completely differently, still just as impactfully uh, without it being this weird, awkward, like, well, let me tell you about your boss. And then the girl immediately questions her bosses and whatever. Like, it just felt a little bit awkward. Otherwise, like I said, I felt like it was a good wrap-up, and I'm excited uh, to someday continue the series. Again, I'm going to read other stuff for a while. I'm, I'm kind of done. And since there is a time jump and a complete shift in tone, and from what I understand, uh, the, the author was kind of 
he was asked to do certain things. Like these books were supposed to be pulpy books. He was asked to do that. I think now he has a little bit more control. Uh, I think the characters will be much more rounded, much more robust, much more interesting. I hope so. Uh, because I know that his Foul series has huge following. And I think that um, these characters deserve that treatment. So we'll see what happens. Have you read these books? Do you know anything about them? Are you interested in them? Have I interested you in them? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is ubiquitous. It is an adjective meaning something that is everywhere, all around you, constantly surrounding you, and you cannot escape from it. Wireless communication in the United States became ubiquitous towards the close of the 20th century. Ubiquitous. U-B-I-Q-U-I-T-O-U-S. Uh, did it really become ubiquitous? Like, I had a cell phone, but I think most people still did not have cell phones until the mid-2000, like, 2005. Like, I don't feel like the close of the 20th century, they were ubiquitous. I think everybody accepted that a lot of people had them, but were they ubiquitous?